Did you know that there was a Vocaloid that was supposed to be a Yandere? Welcome back to my series about forgotten and underrated Vocaloids. Vocaloids that have either been forgotten to time or never really had a chance to begin with. In today's episode, I want to talk about one specifically that got lost to time. This is Mayu, and she has one of the best designs in Vocaloid history. Of course, along with Siyu and Miku. Much like many of Vocaloid's iconic characters, she was introduced on the Vocaloid 3 engine. But something is interesting about Mayu specifically, because her design is rather enigmatic. For example, she has a gothic Lolita inspired outfit, rainbow hair, and she carries around a teddy bear and an axe. If that is not a character that interests you, then I don't know what is. As she coincided with the period of time where Mirai Niki and Yandere Simulator were both at the peak of their popularity. But surprisingly, in the West, she didn't really get a lot of attention for being a Yandere. In fact, most of the vocal like Yandere media that was even paid attention to were things like Scissor Lloyd or Rotten Girl Grotesque Romance, both of which featured Miku. So why didn't Mayu get her moment as the official Yandere Vocaloid? Mayu is a culmination of everything that was popular in otaku culture in the early 2000s and 2010s. She is literally giving Nightcore song cover photo. As I said before, her design is heavily based off of Lolita fashion and has many of the motifs to be able to actually qualify as true Lolita fashion. With my only critique at being that she might be showing a little too much arm, although I have seen Lolita cords that do show as much arm as she is. Especially since she has the longer gloves. She has light blonde hair that fades to rainbow, and her design honestly a little bit coincides with Siyu's character from the song Hide and Seek by Hongi. In fact, there is actually a very popular Hide and Seek cover made with Mayu, and her voice really is suited for it. She is depicted to have a hat with a speaker attached, as, as if you don't already know, most Vocaloid designs have some sort of tech involved within their designs, usually speakers. <laughs> Her earrings are also earphones that hook over the ear. There are also some other musical references in her design as she has a piano texture on her skirt and her dress has amplifier knobs. Her stuffed rabbit is named Usano Mimi and it acts as a microphone as well. And when she holds it as a microphone, she holds it by the neck, which also reinstates some of her more creepy cute themes. According to Vocaloid Wiki, she has been featured in 73 original songs and 64 albums. She was also announced earlier than other Vocaloids before her release, so it caused her to gain a lot of popularity before the time she was released. But there is one thing that's disparaging about the old Vocaloid fandom, and this is that there's a bit of a contrast between the Japanese side of the fandom and the American side of the fandom. Or, I mean, the international side of the fandom as a whole. For those who don't already know this, back in the early 2000s and 2010s, what was really more popular in Japan than YouTube was a site called Nico Nico Toga. And most Vocaloid videos would be uploaded there rather than YouTube. When they would get brought over to YouTube, it would only be because they became so popular on Nico Nico Toga, a fan decided to repost them. Some of these videos wouldn't never gain the success on YouTube that gained on Nico Nico Dolga for one reason or another. It could be title, thumbnail, or just a difference in interest among the two countries. The song may even contain cultural references that don't really make sense to an international audience. That being said, when Mayu came out, she did receive attention from American fans, but nowhere near the attention that others did. There was also a new title character that came out two years prior to Mayu, who was, a new, who was a Yandere as well. However, she was a lot different as a character than Mayu, because Mayu has this very sweet, sweet and innocent appearance, and to a lot of darker cute aesthetics and a Rococo look. Tukonete is just the very, very cut and dry basic Yandere. She was made as a prank she she the whole prank with her was that they were trying to pass her off as a real vocaloid and since she was recorded with like proper techniques and produced quite well she actually sounded like a vocaloid to vocaloid and some people were fooled that this yandere vocaloid character existed but she was not she was an utao as for me personally i prefer mayu i i love utaloids but in this case i just I have a special place in my heart for Mayu because she just feeds into a lot of the ideas that I really like. As well as just loving her voice and just how adorable she is. She looks like a little doll. Another contributor I would like to add to this 
is that while there are some cute 3D animations with Maya that I do recommend checking out, especially her song A Lie and a Teddy Bear, which has an MMD animation that corresponds with it, there were not a lot of MMD animations with Mayu. She actually never, to my knowledge, got a TDA model, which is basically the type of model that everybody uses in those MMD videos. MMD had a huge chokehold on the Vocaloid community in the 2010s. I would say MMD then is equivalent to Project Sekai now. In fact, there are Project Sekai MMD videos, and they are the MMD videos that do well nowadays because it's more of what people are interested in. It seems like very few of her songs actually got really interesting animations, and if they did get interesting animations, they weren't properly pushed to the right audiences. She did have songs about being a yandere, but not that many, and not ones that hit quite as thoroughly in that genre as songs like Rotten Girl Grotesque Romance and Scissor Lloyd. Those two songs were also included in Vocaloid Top 10 videos, which may have not been the most factually accurate videos at the time, but did attract huge audiences to the songs mentioned in any of them. But to clarify how popular she used to be in Japan, in 2014, a random otaku did a, a test to see how many Vocaloids have been downloaded through illegal means. And the top reigning Vocaloid was Mayu, along with the VY2 B3 packet. Mayu had 11,400 illegal downloads. Meanwhile, v VY2 just barely beat her out with 12,400 illegal downloads. Which is insane just by the factors that there weren't as many internet users as there are today. And it really does show that Mayu was at the top of the ladder. As for Mayu herself, she never really got a lot of concerts or anything that other voc vocaloids like the Cryptonloids or Ia got. So it seems like over time, as interest in Yandere characters and Lolita fashion slowly died down, interest in Mayu seemed to die down as well. But I feel like in this current day and age, she would go over a lot better with American audiences since they're more interested in alternative culture and creepy cute types of things. I also feel like there's a lot of fans who really love that sort of aesthetic, especially for a Vocaloid song, but maybe don't even know about Mayu's existence. Either way, Mayu's on my official list of favorite Vocaloids, which I will have to reveal someday. <laughs> Another thing that's interesting about Mayu and a reason why she didn't see further success is that she was made by a company called Exit Tunes, who were known for their Vocaloid compilation albums that basically just had all the top hits from the time. Exit Tunes got bought out by another company and seems to be focusing on real singers now instead of Vocaloids. Which is why Mayu hasn't gotten another voice bank in a good 12 years. <laughs> Which is a shame because she truly had a very unique and soft voice as well as an enigmatic and interesting appearance. Eventually I probably will do other vocal synths as well as fanloids, but I just want to focus on official Vocaloids for right now because there are so many that people don't know about. It's actually interesting to me how there are fanloids and otaloids that are much more popular than official vocaloids, especially with Tato always being the most popular otaloid and surging to one of the most popular vocal synth characters of all time recently with Mesmerizer. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.